And hello, everybody. Welcome. We are live on KEXP. I'm your host, Troy Nelson, from listener-powered independent 90.3 FM KEXP, broadcasting live in Seattle and streaming 24-7 at KEXP.org and our free mobile apps as well. And these live performances are made possible by people like you. So thank you for supporting KEXP. I am extremely grateful. I think this is the most people that have been in the KEXP XP live room, at least for a session I have been a part of, and I'm just surrounded by so much talent right now, I can feel the energy. And I'm talking about Joe Wong and Night Creatures. And if you're all ready, take it away. Dirt into the sky From hello into good 
waiting for the dawn. Wonder if it happened. Waiting for the day.
billions of people who haven't died yet Searching for permanent shelter Under the light of day 
That was an amazing experience. You're listening to Joe Wong and Night Creatures live on KEXP. Uh, I'm just blown away. Joe, I've been playing in bands for like 20 years, and it's hard to even wrangle four people to a band practice, let alone 17 people in the KEXP live room right now. It's just a, a, a wonderful thing. I don't know how you did it. I enjoy the pain. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Well, right when I walked in, I saw a couple of familiar faces of people I've met in the past. I've known Matt Cameron for years on drums. I've met Mary Timoney before, one of my guitar heroes. And uh, all this talent. There's a harp in here. There's violins. Shelly Bergen on harp. Yeah. Wow, amazing. It's just fantastic. Uh, the, the, I'm, I'm just buried deep in the KEXP live room surrounded by all these people. I thought maybe the trombone was going to hit me in the back uh, a couple times. I mean, this is... Uh, the, that can be arranged. That can be arranged. <laughs> And uh, Joe, I wanted to talk to you a little bit. You once recorded in the same studio where they recorded We Are the World. And now you have about as many people in here <laughs> as they did for We Are the World. The question is, which one is the Kenny Rogers and which one is the... Uh, <laughs> is, did Hall and Oates were, are, were both on that? Or? or was it just one Hall and no Oates? Or maybe neither. I don't remember. <laughs> yeah. Michael Jackson is definitely Mary, right? Okay, gotcha. Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm, that makes sense. Um, yeah, and, I mean, a lot of great records were made at A&M. Uh, mm -hmm. Joni Mitchell did all of her stuff in that room, and we were just there for about two hours. I charged up my credit cards to make that session happen back then. Mm, yeah. <laughs> and um, uh, a magic being in the form of Cat Stevens came in when I was in the middle of recording strings, and, uh, you know, having listened to him since I was a young child, it, it was just... Uh, Astonishing to feel his presence behind me and then for him to say, nice tunes. <laughs> yeah, that's a magical moment. Yeah, I think he was visiting his old haunt. Yeah, and uh, speaking of uh, your, your beginnings, Joe, uh, you started playing piano when you were six years old, violin when you were eight years old, and clarinet when you were nine. But when you were 11 years old, you started playing drums, and that was the real vehicle into your musical journey. And you played your first show in the basement of a motel hell and I'm so curious how do you know all this <laughs> <laughs> and you played your first it was the show. Camelot Inn in Milwaukee Wisconsin near the zoo near the zoo okay Camelot Inn when, it was the kind of hotel that rents by the hour and what was your band and called? that would rent to a bunch of 14 year old kids <laughs> what was the band called I don't even remember what <laughs> band name we were using at the time because we had about 10 different names <laughs> Oh, that's hilarious. So you've, uh, you, you get into all these different musical genres, and uh, you go to music school at Berkeley, and you didn't really find people there to collaborate with. Tell me how important the time was that you spent at a farmhouse that you had access to through a family member. How important was that time? It was really important. Uh, after I went to music school, I felt very confused. I mean, having played in the punk DIY scene up until then, and then kind of losing that or shedding part of that identity when I was in school and hearing different voices with uh, varying approaches, I kind of needed to metabolize my life up until then and come up with something. So I was doing that at the farmhouse until I got a call to join a band in Washington, D.C., and then I moved to D.C. And even though that band didn't really work out, it uh, generated all these friendships, um, and many of the people I met during that time are in the room with us right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so interesting that you, you came up on like the DIY punk rock scene and then somehow have found yourself you know, composing scores for you know, movies, Netflix shows, and all this stuff. And uh, how did Stuart Copeland become such an influence on you? Uh, well, he's, his life trajectory was influential in that he started as a drummer. Actually, well, he started doing Clark Kent, which he was the singer and kind of auteur of, but then he became known as a drummer with the police, obviously, mm -hmm. and then um, went into film and TV scoring, and I thought that that was an interesting path to follow. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, married, uh, I mentioned Mary Timoney, uh, and one of my guitar heroes, and if anyone out there doesn't know the name Mary Timoney, just listen to the song Rainbow Shiner by X-Hex, because I'm telling you, that is one of the greatest guitar riffs in history. I put it up there with 
any Black Sabbath riff, any Led Zeppelin riff, Rainbow Shiner is one of my favorite songs. So I, I, I had to point that out. And over the years, Joe, you know, you've been scoring music for TV and film and making music for other people. But then one day you thought to yourself, you know, I've been making music for other people and projects. What about making my own album? And speaking of Mary Timoney, how instrumental was she in making your I couldn't record? have done it without her. She was uh, the spirit guide as I was making the first album. And uh, it was so important for me to be accountable to somebody, but then for that person to be a genius who had made several records in her own right uh, was just a gift. Mm -hmm. um, but I remember before we started the sessions for the first album, I called Mary the night before and asked her if she would want to just come out uh, to Los Angeles for vacation instead because I didn't <laughs> feel ready to do it. And she is the one that pushed me over the edge. Mm -hmm. And helped produce the record as exactly, well. Exactly, yeah. 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 I love that. And played guitar on it. Yes. And sang on it. Awesome. And speaking of making uh, music for movies and Netflix, uh, Netflix shows, one of my favorite shows of the past few years is The Midnight Gospel. And I'm so curious how you got involved with that, that uh, beautiful show. The show was co-created by two gentlemen. One is Duncan Trussell, who was also the voice of the show. And the other person is... Uh, Pendleton Ward, who had previously created a show called Adventure Time. Mm -hmm. And Pendleton was one of my first friends when I moved to LA. We were in an improv class together and uh, all of the requisite drinking that went on before the improv class because we were too nervous. Mm -hmm. um, and we had never worked together, um, but about 10 years into my stay in LA, he was working on this new show with Duncan and thought it could be a good fit. So he brought me in and it was almost as though Duncan and I already knew each other. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, not to give too much away, but a, a big part of the show and in the ultimate episode of the show revolves around Duncan's experience losing his mother. And at the time I was losing my dad. So in fact, during the second meeting that I was scheduled to have with them, I had to quickly fly back home to Wisconsin and say goodbye to my dad. Um, and so I felt like we were just, it was destined to be, and we were on the same wavelength, and it's certainly one of the most um, important shows in my career. Yeah, it, it, uh, it moved me to tears multiple times watching that show. I felt like I was in some kind of beautiful therapy session, you know, every episode, so. Yeah, it, it, it was difficult to watch it over and over again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> very Doing triggering, very emotional, yeah. Yes. Well, this has been an emotional in-studio right here, and so thank you so much, Joe Wong and Night Creatures, for taking the time to do this. Thank you so much. We're so glad to be here. Absolutely. Once again, that is Joe Wong and Night Creatures, live on KEXP. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.